When I became a Christian, I made a mistake, and I didn't really realize the mistake I was making at the time, but ultimately it would cause me a lot of heartache down the line. Let me tell you this story. Here's how I'd explain it. Um, my wife and I have been watching a lot of Survivor, and in Survivor, if you guys have watched it, you need to make a lot of fire, okay? And if you're making a fire, what do you need to do? Okay, you're rubbing flint and steel together. Once you create that spark, you're feeding the fire immediately. Those first few moments of the fire's life are the most important. You're feeding it, you're feeding it, you're feeding it, and then ultimately there's some coals that can be a little bit more long-standing. But in your Christian walk, I think it's similar. That spark happens. God ignites your heart. He brings you from death into life. And all of a sudden, you're feeding that spark. You're feeding that flame. And that's exactly what I did. The important part is, what are you feeding the fire with? And for me, this is what it looked like. I would listen to YouTube videos, podcasts, all sorts of online content about Christianity, apologetics, evangelism. It made sense because that was how I became a Christian in the first place. I was raised in a Christian family, and yet it wasn't till I heard a witnessing encounter online from Ray Comfort that it really clicked for me. So how do you know if you're a good person? I feel it. it doesn't everybody feel that? A lot of people aren't aware, but I'm very aware. You believe in God? So I wanted to continue to take this stuff in, take this kind of content in. Now we can talk about the negative impacts of being online constantly and watching things and being overstimulated and distracted and all those things. I'm with you there. But here's the problem. Here was the problem, the mistake that I was making. So these are just some of the books that I would have read at that point. I was reading like a book a week. I was on fire. Even though I was taking in so much of this Christian content that was good, I was taking in sermons that were talking about the Bible, podcasts that were talking about philosophy and theology and all these deep theological terms, and I could spell them off for you. The problem was I wasn't particularly familiar with the Bible itself. Sorry, my cat hit the tripod. Like I could tell you general verses that everybody knows. John 3.16, Romans 3.23. I could take you down the Romans road and lead you to Christ. But in terms of how this all fit together and the Old Testament specifically, I really didn't have a lot of context or understanding of it. Sure, we did Bible in school and I learned some general things and things in Sunday school as well at church, but I felt behind. I felt like, hey, I'm supposed to be this person that understands the Bible and is interested in theology and he's even leading people to Christ and yet I felt like man I really don't know the first thing about this book and how to navigate it and how to read it and how to study it I just had no clue the truth was I felt embarrassed I felt behind I felt like man at that point I was blogging too and making some YouTube videos and I and it'd been years since I became a Christian and yet people would bring these things to me and these stories in the Bible that I hadn't heard of and I hadn't studied because I was just taking in what other people said about the Bible. Now, obviously, there are some challenges to this. You are pretty much in submission to the people that are bringing you what the Bible says. Like, you need to trust them because you can't really sort it out for yourself. So I was trusting a lot of the people and the, the pastors that were the good ones and, and the ones that were theologically sound. So, like, I'm thankful that a lot of those guys, even to this day, I respect but there were some things that they would say and that I was taught that I just don't agree with anymore. I knew this was a problem. I knew I neglected reading the Bible and I neglected it for a long time, like actually reading the Bible, not just listening to a sermon, not just watching to a Christian YouTube video, not just reading a book on Christianity, but reading the Bible. Here's what I had to do though. I had to humble myself. I had to be like, okay, you know what? You pose yourself as somebody that knows the Bible and, and knows theology and knows these big theological words and concepts, but you need to humble yourself and actually read the word. Hey guys, quick thing before we continue on in the video, I wanna let you know that this video and this content is supported by the people on Patreon. This is the way that I can continue to make this content. It would be a huge blessing if you would sign up on there if you've been encouraged by this content and you wanna support the mission, my mission of equipping people to follow Jesus daily, it would be a huge blessing. Now, back to the content. Now, don't get me wrong. I don't think there's anything wrong with listening to theological teachers and preachers and reading books and wanting to learn more and listening to podcasts and watching YouTube videos. Like, all those things are good. I think all those things are, are awesome, but they're supplemental. 
they're supplemental to actually getting in the word yourself, actually being part of a local community where you can be built up and fed. Like if you are treating the online space and treating podcasts and YouTube videos and online sermons as the only place where you get fed, the only place where you really like search and seek God, you're missing out. And I found that. I was like, man, it just feels incomplete. It just feels like I'm missing something. And I was. I was. Now, one of the big problems when you ground your theological and and spiritual formation in the teaching of one of these people, right, whether it's a spiritual uh, pastor online or YouTuber or whoever or author, um, is when they deconstruct or when they leave the faith or there's some scandal found out about them. What does that do to your own faith? And hopefully you're in a place where you don't tether it to them. But for me, especially early on, there are some people that I was really connected with and I loved what their their teaching was but then for me it was recognizing some of their major flaws and lack of compassion that was a real hit to me I was like man I can't believe they're like this I can't believe they talk like this I can't believe th- this isn't Jesus way and 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 yet I I kind of felt that but I didn't have enough knowledge of the scripture to really be able to refute it. So in that sense, I asked a lot of questions being like, well, if this is what Christianity is, maybe I don't even want it. All along that could have been avoided if I actually knew the scriptures for myself, then I would have been able to discern, hey, this isn't consistent with Jesus. Look, I understand getting in the Bible can be really intimidating. Like I was there. I was a Christian for years and I never really dug into it seriously myself. And so you're like, where do I start? You've listened to all these theological podcasts or YouTube videos or Instagram reels and you have a concept, you you understand the basics you feel like, but it's just like this book is so big. Here's what I would recommend. And this is, a lot of people might think, Isaac, this is too basic and this is too easy and this isn't strict enough, but this is where I begin, right? Open your Bible and begin somewhere like John, the book of John. That's where I like to recommend people because it's the story of Jesus. So open your Bible to John and set a timer and read for five minutes, five minutes. And this is where people get on me because they're like, Isaac, five minutes isn't nearly enough. But seriously, just do it. Read for five minutes and meditate on what you learn, on what you read. Ask God to help reveal what he's trying to say to you through the scripture. Sure, if you can look up a commentary, if you want to understand the scripture more, but just focus on that five minutes of reading. When you get in the habit of reading for five minutes, it becomes easier. And you know what? It's like when you've been hungry for a long time and yet you don't really have an appetite. And then all of a sudden you start to snack a little bit and your appetite comes back. You're a lot more hungry, right? So this is what it's doing. It's, it's like wetting your appetite for the scripture. You're, you're dedicating five minutes because that's something easy that everyone can do. You can fit five minutes in. And when you do it, and this is exactly how I did it, when you do it, you kind of want to read more. That's how I felt. I was like, I'd read for five minutes and I was like, well, I kind of want to just read to the end of the chapter. So I would. And then the next day, it's like, I'm going to read for five minutes. And then I kind of want to read more. I want to find out what happens or what he's trying to say here. The big point. Maybe your hermeneutics aren't great. You don't totally under, understand what all this means. And that's where those different resources can come in, like commentaries, like different Bible studies on these passages. But I encourage you just to read, to give you the confidence that, hey, I can open up the Bible for myself and I can learn and God can speak to me through it. It's humbling and maybe it doesn't feel as productive as listening to a sermon or um, a Christian uh, you know, book or podcast. But trust me, because the Bible says this, uh, God's word does not retor- return void. God's word does not return void. It will not be empty in your life. It is meaningful and it will change you if you continue to open it up. Hey guys, thanks for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, subscribe because I'm putting out new videos all the time and pass it on to a friend that you think might benefit from this content. Until next time, God bless.